Okay, so I don't know what the title of this video is going to be. I haven't decided on that yet. I posted a video because there was a an article that was posted around millennials feel that there's no opportunity for them. And so I corrected um, what was written in the article in terms of that there is always opportunity. You just have to be smart with what you have. If you only have a hundred dollars, then be smart with that hundred dollars and double it and double it and double it again. And then and that's all that anyone does to become wealthy. And that's still the case. No matter what you see with the prices rising and inflation and things of that nature, I would not worry about it. But I had a, a request to produce more videos. And so what I'll do with this video is I'll explain. In terms of investing, I started investing in the stock market when I was 20 years ago, 19 years old. And I started by just buying stocks and then getting smarter about it. I spoke to financial advisors because the people say, go oh, talk to an expert if you don't know. And so I did speak with financial advisors and it was hit and miss. A lot of them didn't make me any money. Um, and I had to actively make sure that what they were saying made sense and take control of that those investments. And so if you do get involved, make sure that you realize that you are the investor and there is no one there that's going to be making you money. There's no, you know, you cannot go hire someone. And there are a lot of people out there that have opportunities for you to invest in and you need to be able to get better at identifying which opportunity you want to invest in. And so my early experience with the stock market in net, I, I lost money because I didn't know what I was doing, but I think I actually, I lost money on stocks, but overall I, I made a little bit of money. And so some of the companies that I had invested in early on were things like Nortel Networks and, and uh, another that I can't remember right now. But these companies went bankrupt, right? And so then the stock is worth nothing. And then I learned about, you know, at that point I had no idea. I had no idea. I had not studied anything. I had no idea. So I learned about what can happen if you, if you don't uh, critically think about your investments. And so I stopped doing that in, in terms of just buying something because it was a, a name that, that I recognized and I found familiar. I think the other one was Lucent Technologies and I don't even know what they do, but they went bankrupt as well. So don't do that. Don't, don't invest in those types of things. I don't think I invested in any hype and I don't even know what the hype back then would have been. Perhaps the hype would have been Google. Um, I, I would have had an opportunity to invest in Google early on. I did not, and I'm happy with that. I didn't want to invest in Google. So that's, that's it. I, and I'm not an expert on investing, but generally I made money. I started making money when I started investing in funds, right? And I had read a book now. I had read a book which recommended to just invest in index funds. Invest in the index funds and generally you will make money. And so that's what I started doing. I was like, look, I can't just pick random stocks. I'm going to just use index funds. And so then I invested in index funds and then within index funds, there's different, not necessarily within index, there is different indexes. There's the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the, and the NASDAQ, for example. But there are also, and I did invest in them and I don't recommend it, invest in mutual funds. Now, if you're investing in mutual funds, you need to pay close attention to the management overhead expense. I also invested in hedge funds and again, there pay attention to the management overhead expense. And the hedge funds are doing advanced strategies with, with options and arbitrage and things of that nature, which you can learn about if you want to. And so I have had investments in there and I, I've been selling them off. It's been slow to sell them off because a lot of these investments happened in Canada and now I'm in the United States. And so there's a, there's a tax event that will happen if I sell things. In, in Canada while well, I'm in the United States, the United States taxes you globally. So I've been reluctant to sell, but I have sold a lot of them that I realized like these are just bad, badly run funds. And so I got rid of them. And what I've kept is 
is performing decently. And I, I keep those. And I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, as I said, this is like early on when I, I was investing in it would have been, yeah, I think this is probably in the sixth year of my investing that I started looking into hedge funds and bought some in Canada. And then, but the strategy that I did follow, and I still recommend to a certain extent, I don't recommend it right now, but in general, you invest in an index fund and you're going to make money over time. Right now, now, I don't recommend that because you look at some of these index funds, they have companies that you know are not going to be making money. You de they are definitely not going to be making money because we had this and still have, I don't know what they're calling it now, but the coronavirus epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it. There are industries that are not going to recover for a while. You look at um, airline industry, it's changed dramatically. There still continues to be the use of airlines for freight, DHL, FedEx, they still need to use their planes. The ability to travel has been hindered. I have no desire to travel if I have to go through these um, jump through hoops for coronavirus. So I'm not going to travel. Now, some people might go through that. They get their vaccination and keep traveling. And that's great for them. But the number of people traveling is far less. And so the airline industry has to. Airline industry has always been a competitive in industry and their margins are not very high. They have to make some changes now. So are they going to be investing in new aircraft for passengers when no one is flying? And if they don't have the aircraft for flights, then are they even able to offer options to customers? No. So those co companies are not going to make money and they're going to be in the index fund because that's what the index fund is. It's going to include these type of, they call them blue chip companies. So at this point, I would not recommend investing in the index funds because you can do a better job yourself. You can go and look at that the index fund or find a specialized fund that will avoid those. Okay. The other one that is right now is not going to recover for a long time is the commercial real estate in terms of office space. No one wants to go back to the office. And I mean that no one wants to go back to the office unless you have to go to the office and there's, I don't see any reason to go back to the office. If you're doing something that involves working with um, something that you're manufacturing, then you need to go, but that's not an office. That's going to be um, industrial real estate. So industrial real estate, I think, is, is a better investment than, than office real estate. And then beyond that, the residential real estate, people are still going to need to live somewhere and you have options. You can either invest in, in homes, there's single family and multifamily homes, and then there's also apartment buildings, which is um, considered commercial real estate. And a lot of people rent apartments. So those are still good investments. People need to live somewhere. Average person does not want to be living in a tent and, you know, sleeping in the woods and whatnot. So I would, and you can invest in real estate investment funds. And I posted one that I'm invested in right now, which is called, oh, and it's good. It pays a dividend and it will continue to pay a dividend. So that is something that I would recommend you invest in. So when I look at my portfolio, I think of it in, in these terms as someone who's 39 years old in my experience with life, someone that strives to lead a simple and effective life that I enjoy there. I can very easily discriminate between the essential and the non-essential. For example, I don't invest in alcohol and, and, um, I don't know, whatever you do, cannabis these days, new cannabis investment, but I just don't even, I don't even look at it because to me, I, I'm conscious about my impact on the world. And I know that alcohol and drugs cause more harm than they cause good. No one can tell me otherwise. I've seen, I have lost friends who died while they were um, drunk, you know, drinking and driving. And it's not one, I lost at least two. I've lost at least two personal friends that died drinking and driving. And then there's a variety of others that did not die, but they, they, they didn't go through a pleasant experience. And then I've had friends that have been addicted to drugs and they just degenerate, they deteriorated. What the impact is just, it's, it's a negative, negative experience. And I don't care if they've legalized it in terms of cannabis. I'm not going to invest in that. Right. So I don't even look at that kind of stuff at this point. And that keeps me focused because there's so much hype and stuff out there. And if you're just, if you're just concerned about making a profit, you will invest in those things and you might make some money. I don't know. I never tried it. So I don't know. Some people do.
Bitcoin things like that I don't invest in because I understand how money works. If I can't use something to buy something, then why do I hold it? I'm just holding it because I was watching a Warren Buffett video and he said, well, there's only a certain amount of gold on the earth, which is wrong. It's not true. And Warren Buffett probably doesn't know this. A lot of people don't know. The earth is designed in a manner that things are levitating from the core of the earth. So the earth can produce more gold and it can come up and then we need to have the technology to find that gold and mine the gold. So anyone that tells you there's a limited amount of anything on the earth does not really understand the earth. And I don't think anyone really understands the earth. But the reality is that there is something known as levitation. Or I don't know what, if there's another word for it, but if you do any gardening, you will know also that the rocks just come up. They just come up. You can go maintain a land and clear out the rocks and then rocks will appear because the earth is in constant motion and things are coming up. And it happens even with gold. I was reading an article about it. So the gold can come up from within the earth. That's one option. The other option is through space exploration. You can find uh, gold or something could hit the earth with gold. So there's always more gold. But the more important consideration is gold is useless. What is gold good for? Well, you can wear a fat chain or you can put on a gold ring or earrings. And, and it's great. I don't have anything wrong with that. If somebody wants to wear earrings or a ring and stuff, that's great. Good. It's fashion. They feel good. Awesome. But is it a good investment? I don't think so. Because at the end of the day, if I had just have gold, and I've had a lot of gold. Okay, I mean, I I grew up in the 90s where it was, uh, you know, like a bling bling lifestyle. Okay, so I, and I had it all. Indian background, so I could go get, my grandma used to love gold. I'd go get 22 karat gold, custom design, rings, chains, pendants. I had watches, so many, wa all that. So I've had experience with that and, and I still have it. When you have it, then what can you do with it in the long term? I mean, yeah, the price will appreciate a little bit. So uh, perhaps you can melt it and sell it for something to recapture what you paid for it. But it's, it's unlikely that you're going to make profit off of it. And so they talk about gold bars and things like that and Fort Knox. And it's the reality is today, gold, It's not the best investment. It's not something that I am. I don't think the world is going to become a better place if you have more gold. Now I ha end up investing a little bit in gold because in my in my retirement account, where it's a it's a diversified portfolio, they've they've made it so that I'm invested in in a little bit of gold as well as treasuries and other things that are considered more stable than investing in. And companies and so I do end up having investments in gold and plus I have gold because because I have gold I, I, uh, as I said I grew up in the 90s and I had gold and then kids like it too you know they like to wear earrings and whatnot so they you know a little bit in terms of a consumer and, term, and I consider that to be to be fashion really it's just something you're buying to look good so I was talking about gold. I don't invest in gold, gold or very little bit in gold. What I do invest in, me personally, I invest in companies that I believe are going to do well in the long term and are going to make the world a better place. For me, that's companies such as Chevron, not going anywhere. We're going to need oil and gas. There's a pipeline, Enbridge pipeline. That's great. I was very disappointed when Biden stopped the Keystone pipeline coming from Canada because it puts the United States in a in a position of weakness. If there is any any need to defend our borders or to participate in a conflict with another country, then you need to have gas. You cannot there there is not yet reliable solar technology for you to have a military operation using only solar technology. You will always always need gas in the foreseeable future. So I'm invested in that pipeline and Enbridge pipeline. It's a decent investment. And I'm invested in, I invest in McDonald's and Wendy's and uh, QSR owns Burger King, I believe, because it's good food. Kids love it. It tastes good. You're hungry, you eat it, and I don't see it going anywhere. It's not the best food. Better food is, for me personally, I prefer grass-fed beef. And so if there's a way that I can invest in, in farms, and I'm looking into that right now, if there's a way to invest in farms that produce grass-fed beef, I want to invest in that because I think we need more cattle on the earth. There needs to be more beef and people should
to eat that. We don't need anyone to be hungry. And protein is filling. It's good for your body. And the best is if it's grass-fed because then you get the full benefit of a cow. It's not just the meat. You get the, the leather. And you can also get dairy, which, again, I think is great. People love ice cream. I'm not the biggest fan of ice cream, but a lot of people love it. I think it's a good nutrition to those who enjoy it. And so, you know, when my kids want ice cream, I buy them ice cream. And then butter. Butter is very healthy for you, and you can use that to cook a lot of meals. So that's an area that I would like to invest in. I haven't quite figured out the strategy to invest in, in terms of certain types of farming. I wouldn't invest, personally wouldn't invest in soy and corn and because what has happened with those is they were subsidized. So there were subsidies put in place on corn, for example, in the United States. And so they are able to produce a lot of corn and it's produced, it's mass manufactured. And so now what you have is instead of, instead of sugar, which is, which is not that bad for you, it's not the best thing for you to eat, but it's, it's, it's decent if you need, you know, energy, quick energy you can get from sugar. Instead of sugar now in the United States, we have high fructose corn syrup. So if you buy Coca-Cola in the United States, you get high fructose corn syrup. If you buy Coca-Cola in Mexico or in India, you get sugar because they are using sugar cane. That's more plentiful there, right? And so when it comes to farming, I, I'm selective. I don't want... And also soy. Soy is used in... Well, they have soy sauce, for example. And I think tofu comes from, from soy. It might be a fermented soy. And now when they're doing these fake meats and things, they will use soy. I'm not a big fan of it. I've tried all of it, you know. I'd be in a, I was a vegan at one point. I tried everything and not just for like a day or two, but for an extended period of time. And my conclusion is that that is not beneficial for your health, that your health is you strive better if you will eat the meat that is good for your body. And it doesn't have, you know, some people like steak, others like ice cream. OK, and it could be um, something else. I'm not a big fan of chicken. I do like eggs. So again, eggs, uh, I think is a good good type of farming operation because a lot of people a lot of people eat eggs quickly make yourself an omelet or there are other things you know you can poach the eggs and whatnot and kids kids like it so that I also think is good um, in terms of other stock investments I've invested in in companies that I believe are are going to be continue to be profitable one is a, a company that produces it's a chemical company that produces fragrances and flavors. So a lot of times these days you, you read the food label and it says, you know, flavor. It's not that they put lemon in there, it's the flavor of lemon. So there are companies that specialize in that and I think that will continue. People love flavor. That's at the end of the day what people like to experience when they consume something. So there's even flavored water or, or, and then they try to make it zero calorie and, and they can't because of these flavors. So I've invested in a company called International Flavors and Fragrances that specializes in producing those flavors for other, other food companies. And I think that's a good investment. And it also aligns with my, my morality that if people want the flavor. I know about flavors. I used to like certain flavors from Peru, bitter flavors in drinks. Or if you're making, you can make virgin cocktails, right? And if you make a proper margarita, you need to have it's best to use fresh lime and, and whatnot, but there are others that like to just pour in the, the flavor, right? So I invest in the flavors, industrial. And there are other industrial companies that I invest in, I'm trying to remember, like uh, Emerson Electric, for example. So there is, if you, you also have to understand the supply chain that, you know, right now you cannot buy a new car. It's very difficult to buy a new car because there is a supply chain shortage on computer chips. They're putting so many computer chips in cars these days, and sensors that, that monitor the car and tell you when it needs maintenance or sense if you're going to hit into someone. And so many various use cases that are being added to the car that require computer chips, yet they do not have that available. And so you cannot, it's very difficult to buy a new car. It took me multiple years to buy a new car. And then I had to settle with what was available. I couldn't get the exact one I wanted. I had no option. Either buy the car, which is, it's a good car. I'm happy with it. The seats are not leather. I would have preferred leather seats. Um, but I didn't have an option. I was either buy this new car or buy new nothing because they were done with production for the year. So from that perspective, I think that 
there's going to be demand to solve this supply chain problem with the computer chips. And, and that's why I've invested in, not yet invested, but planning to invest in a, a certain supplier of microchips. And there are a couple other companies that I've invested in. I can't, I don't think I have them on the top of my head right now, but that, that's uh, all it comes down to. And then you want to get to the point that you have at least 10 companies in different industries. So if you invest in one technology company, then next time around invest in a different industry. You don't want to be too heavy in any particular industry because when an industry is hit, then the, generally multiple companies will be affected. So, for example, and then you can look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. There's 10, sorry, 11 industries. They have, um, they have real estate. They added that recently, and then they have 10 others. One is consumer staples or cyclicals or something like that. And then there's industrial, and there's technology, and others that I, I you know, you can look it up yourself, and it's important to understand it. So when you invest in companies, try to invest in different industries. And as I said, in some scenarios, like right now, I don't want to invest in, I don't know if the airlines have their own industry or, or what the, what's going on there. I don't want to invest in anything that has to do with that. In the hospitality industry with hotels, I don't want to invest in that right now. So I won't even look at those industries for until this is over. And what I mean by this is over is that I can fly where I want to without having to jump through hoops because someone is trying to tell me that there's a, a threat. So. I wouldn't even look at those, but then there's, in terms of of the Dow Jones, there are other sectors that I can't, right now can't think of it, but there are other sectors. And so when you invest, make sure you diversify your portfolio so that you're holding at the minimum five different industries. But if you can get towards eight or nine, that's probably better. And that's it. And then you learn over time. So you put the money in, let's say you have a certain amount of money and whatever you have, then you divide it. Okay. And you, you, you put what, what you have in, in, in the companies that you select. And then there's uh, if you're investing in companies that pay dividends, then you'll get paid dividend. That will be, that is considered an ordinary income. So your income is going up because you're making dividends and that's fine. You can offset that income with other um, strategies. And one good strategy is, to have real estate, okay? If you have re a re uh, buy real estate in the United States, you get a there, and you're using that as a rental property. Then the cost that you pay for the building is can be depreciated over 27 and a half years. So whatever that building costs over 27 and a half years, you can deduct that from your income. So as you're making money off your dividends, you are actually uh, you're offsetting your tax liability because if you don't then you're going to, the government, if you make a certain amount of ordinary income, then the government will come and demand taxes. But if you have a rental property that's a, that's a depreciating asset for 27 years, then you can get to, into the situation where you pay no taxes. Now, some people get upset when they hear, oh, Amazon is not paying tax. Anyone that pays taxes is not smart, right? They haven't understood the tax law and they're not, they're not understanding how to play the game. So when you hear at a company like Amazon is not paying taxes, that is what Amazon needs to do. That is also what you need to do. And the best scenario is not that you're not paying taxes because you don't have income and you're broke. You want to be making a lot of money and not paying taxes, which is what Amazon is doing. So that's what I would say is you get, get ordinary income from your dividends and then offset that income that you make with a depreciation expense on your real estate, which is also bringing in passive income. You're getting rent from the properties. And that's something that I realized later in life and the reason I did not get into it early on is because I know I'm not the type of person that likes to manage a rental property. What you can do these days is you can find companies that specialize in property management and will manage it for you. So that is, uh, and now within real estate, there are other areas that I'm interested in that I haven't gotten into yet fully, but I have experience with it in terms of I have friends and family that do, have done it. My father did it. My brother-in-law is doing it, you know, and that is, real estate development. So you buy a piece of land and then you hire contractors to build a house and then you can design that house how you need it to be. It could be a multifamily home or it could be a nice home for a family. And then you put that house on the market and you sell it and you make a profit. And so if you can go through that, a lot of times the construction loan will have higher interest 
than a regular mortgage and they'll have some requirement that you have a greater down payment so if you're trying to do it and you don't have the money then it can get to be a little bit complex but it can be solved and a lot of people do it best if you have cash and you just put your cash into it and then there will always be a demand for housing in the united states in particular and also in canada we don't suffer the same problem that countries like india and china do where they have overpopulation okay we have a lot of space there is a lot of space in canada a lot of space in the united states and we do need more people that's why these countries are open to immigration and bringing in we want to bring in stable people that is people that have potential to contribute to our economy we don't want to bring in riffraff although some of that runs across the border and you know from mexico to the united states tons of space here anyone that tells you that there's too many people on the planet is a stupid person right they don't understand the planet at all there's a lot of space in the planet there's room for more people and there will continue to be and so when you look at things like real estate i don't see it happening anytime soon because what we have in the united states which i don't know if you have it if it's there in canada or not but it's definitely here in the united states because we have the second amendment which is the right to bear arms and anyone and everyone can carry a gun so there's no in canada it's not quite there uh it's a little bit more i don't know what's the right word but it's not as it's it, it's it's just a different situation with the government there but in the united states you have this system is designed to have the political pressure and the limitation of terms to keep the country healthy and it's a well-designed system so I don't think that there will ever be in Canada uh, population control like you have in China. And I don't think they ever had it in India. But it's different in, in India. The issue is poverty and they haven't, they haven't quite figured out how to give people a better means of life. And I don't know why that is. Okay, There's corruption or something going on there. And even in South America, the same thing. Right? There are a lot of places where there's poverty. If you aren't living in those places, and even if you're living in those places, you learn a lot. You learn a lot about human behavior and how to succeed in that type of environment. If you can succeed in that type of environment, you can succeed in the United States at another level. And so that's why it's good when people come in here and support immigration. I also supported the wall and it's not, I'm not, and I like the idea of having a wall with a big beautiful door in the middle and a process for people to come in. I think that was a great, great idea. And I'm sad that Biden has interrupted it for now. I am confident at some point that there will be someone else that gets in power and resumes that wall, finish that wall and keep keep the killers and the human trafficking and the cocaine out of the country. We don't need it in the country. Now I went into a political discussion there and some people will say, well, you can, you need to be aware of politics, especially if you're living in a, in a democracy because it's your responsibility in the democracy to make these decisions. And you also need to know this if you're investing in stock, because if you're investing in stock and you have to think long term. You have to think, hey, which company is going to make me money over 10 years? You also have to have an overall vision of what you want in 10, term, 10 years, what you're trying to drive to. And that's going to involve policy. Right. If, if it doesn't, then then it's going to be an incomplete vision. At some level, you'll have to be aware of policy. And who do you what do you want to see happen with the company's laws so that the companies that you're investing in thrive. And now these types of thinking didn't come to me until later in life. I'm making this video in terms of my investment experience, as I said, I started off with, I just randomly picked stocks. I made money on some and I lost money on others. And so probably broke even. Then I had uh, someone that was selling me hedge funds. I got into the hedge funds and I had to take control of that and sell off the ones that were not performing and still hold on to some other ones. And then at the same time got into mutual funds index funds and and um then i i stopped when i read the thing about the index funds i stopped investing in independent countries uh companies sorry and then i resumed investing in independent companies now because of what's happening with i cannot just invest in the index because i know that there's continue there's going to be, continue to be repercussions from things like coronavirus so i don't want to invest in airlines or in hospitality because I don't think it's going to recover for some time and let somebody else deal with that. That's the other beautiful thing about the market is doing. You don't want to be in a company, you just sell and you go to another company. And so that's where I am now. And I have made money from the index funds. I made money from the index funds. 
I also made money from stocks, independent stocks. At one point I was working for a company and I understood that company and I knew it was a good company and had good technology so that I held on to some stock from that company. And so I, again, if you're working for a company and you love that company and you really think it's a good company, then by all means consider that stock as well. And that would be a good strategy. And the other good aspect of that strategy is it makes you more integrated as a, and aligned as a person because the company you're working for, you're also an owner, investor of, right? So then you want to work and do a really good job and you want to make sure everyone around you is doing a good job and you'll have the confidence to call them out and say, look, you're going to take us on a path where we spend unnecessarily. And at the end of the day, that's what's required to, to invest in a business is to understand what is necessary and what is not, what is an unnecessary expenditure. And the whole structure is an organization is designed for that. So I would say also that if you get a job then, then and you like the job, then consider that um, investment as well and compare your company to the, to the competition and the peers. Is your company really better or do you think it's worse? And if it's worse, then you probably need to change the job, invest in the other company and, and start looking at trying to get a job there, right? So um, there's that aspect to it as well. And, and then and it's a journey and it's fun and you learn and it gives you something to do when you have spare time. And when you hear news, you, you basically build a model in your mind and it's in your mind and then you should, you might want to also put it in a spreadsheet or write it on a piece of paper because it, that tends to be helpful uh, day to day, but it, there's a copy of it in your mind as well. And so that when you hear about new things and things going on, as you understand the world better and how everything works, you'll, you, you'll understand the, the, the cause and effect or chain reactions of this news that you're hearing and you can, you can make changes to your portfolio. So these are the reasons why I love investing, honestly. It was something that I wasn't paying much attention to in the past, but I did learn about it. And now I'm paying more attention to it because I have the luxury to do so. And if you're getting started, as I said, choose individual stocks right now. Okay. In general, I could say invest in an index fund. Not right now. Okay. Google is trying to get, Google is trying to get into an index fund because you know they're splitting the stock and, uh, and perhaps some of these other companies could do so at some point. But right now, the risk of the index funds is the airlines and the, the companies that provide the airlines. Boeing is, is getting hit as well. And then also the hospitality industry in general, all of these resorts and hotels. If there is, and there probably is some group that holds the hotels. I know there was a lot of consolidation in the hotel industry, so there's, these big companies that have a variety of brands like Marriott and Sheraton and Hyatt and Hilton, and they're going to be hit. And if any of them are in the index funds, and I haven't checked if they are or not, but they probably are. I know Boeing is for sure, but then these other ones, that's going to, that's going to be a drag on the index. You know that. So don't invest in the index. Try to find something that avoids that. The other option you have is ex exchange traded funds. They're called ETFs. And so then you can find a fund that's run by someone with more experience and they will explain what their strategy is, right? So the one ETF is on, on dividend yielding companies I saw the other day. And so that is something that I would invest in because when a company is paying dividends consistently over a period of time, it means that the company is profitable and is able to give that profit back to you. And that at the end of the day is what's important in holding a stock. You want a company that is profitable and making money. That's the purpose of the company. Other companies have other purposes. There are, you know, non NGOs just trying to make the world a better place, not concerned about profit. And um, so index funds rather than rather than the NASDAQ Dow Jones, I would consider an index fund that focuses on dividends. I think that's a good idea. I would do that if you want the easiest path forward. And then, and then perhaps in a year or two, when this pandemic is over, you can reconsider and move into the broader index. But if you want to get smarter right now, then just start with companies and you know which companies are out there that are, you should know because you are living in the world, you're buying things, you have priorities and goals in life, and you have a family of some little brothers and sisters, or perhaps you're married and you're or planning to get married and to have children. And then as you have that, uh, responsibility as a as a good family member then 
you will also know what they're spending on, right? And so, and the more you collect, connect this, this, your investment to what's good for the planet and your family, the better off you will be. So that's my recommendation. Chevron, for example, beautiful company. I just remember filling up my car with Chevron gas. And however they do that, I don't know all the details, but somehow they get the gas to where it needs to be and everyone can fill the tanks and that's going to continue to be the case. I don't see that going away anytime soon. And, and as I said, McDonald's, Wendy's, good food. I don't eat it all the time, but if I'm hungry, I'm going to go there because I know what I'm going to get. It's not a gamble. You go to some small shop. I don't know if I'll, I should get into it. I, so I have a rental property and then was renting that property and then tenants come, right? And I'm, I keep an open mind. I don't discriminate against people. So the tenant comes and, and then you, you appeal to the tenant based on their credit score and their ability to pay rent. And that's all basically. I, and if a tenant doesn't go through through the credit check with a good credit score and doesn't have a job and ability to pay rent, then I don't consider them. And so I had one tenant that comes and now when they're not able to do that, they will, they will plead with you, right? And tell you their whole life story. So one tenant comes and had a job and he was wanted to move in to this unit with his, with, with his gay lover and not just one, but a second one. And I, and I was okay with that. I'm like, okay, but I'm not concerned that you're a homosexual, that if you want to do that for whichever reason, I don't understand it, but hey, if you want to do it, you can do that. Yeah. You don't have a credit score, so I'm not going to take on the risk. I don't, and I don't understand you. Honestly, I have no, I, I don't understand you at all. I've never been in a situation where I'm in love with another man, right? And it's not just one, there are three of them. And I don't even like, meaning three men, okay, three men, no woman no children. And so but what I did learn from that is that they're working at a restaurant nearby. Okay. And I was interested in trying that restaurant because it looked like, Hey, that looks like an interesting restaurant. It had a good name or something. And it's kind of like, it's like a, I think it has a, it's like a crab, French crab casino or something like that. And then, then I found out all of this and a lot of information, right? That he's the manager and the other guy, guy is the chef. And so I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to go ever to that restaurant ever in my life, right? I'm not going to go eat food cooked by um, a homosexual because he, the, this person is radically different than me. And I don't know how hygienic he is and what he's doing to the food. And it's just, I'm just not going to be able to enjoy the food. So now, now I'll never go to that restaurant. And, and prior to this experience, I was planning to visit the restaurant, right? And so then I sat down and I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I mean, I, McDonald's, I know the process is hygienic because I had a friend that was working for, for McDonald's and yes, yeah, sure. They got rats running around and stuff, but the way that they handle the food and process the food, it's very, very controlled. They want you to have a consistent experience. And so, um, and my friend wasn't, wasn't gay. He, I mean, I, I guess it, anyways, I don't want to get into the side topic, but so I like these, the, and even Donald Trump is the same way, right? I'd rather have a hygienic food. That's going to be a consistent experience then take a gamble with a new restaurant because I've had some bad experiences with new restaurants. And then now I'm finding out, got some information about what goes on in the back or might go on in the back. Right. So, so as I said, I do invest and will continue to invest in McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, because I know they're controlled, hygienic, consistent food. If there was another restaurant to invest in, I might consider it, um, but not, not over those because at the end of the day, the cost is low, the food is good, you're hungry, you're full, you got a family, you got 15 people to feed, you bring the McDonald's or Wendy's, everyone will have something that they like, right? And everyone is happy. And so when Donald Trump was doing that at the White House, people were laughing about it, condemning, hey, that was smart. I mean, I'm visiting the White House and some, I, when I was younger, I used to do um, crosswalk, right? Where we had a crosswalk where kids would have to cross the street to go to the school. And so somebody after school and in the morning, I believe, although I did it after school, would have to stand there with a stop sign. And I used to do that. And then after I had done it for, for a few months, they gave me a, a burger from McDonald's. I was so happy because I get this delicious burger, right? And I loved it. It was positive experiences. 
for me with McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, and Dairy Queen, although Dairy Queen, I, I don't know if you can invest in that directly. I think Warren Buffett owns most of it. And he's a smart man from a business perspective. Okay, so I think that wraps it up for me. In conclusion, if you're starting investing right now this year, I would not recommend an index fund. You can get another type of fund that will not be the full index. And look at those. There are these funds that invest in dividend yielding stocks. I think those are good plays. Better than that is you invest in individual companies, companies that you know are going to continue to do well over the long term. They are not going to be hyped companies. They're going to be uh, solid companies with a history. Microsoft is one of them. I talked about some others, Chevron, Enbridge. There's international fragrances and flavors. And then there are 3MM, I think the ticker is triple M, 3M. So they make a lot of things like adhesives and stuff that you need in industrial applications. And even if you want to put stuff on the wall, that's a good company. Uh, tapes and things of that nature. And um, there are other staples if you think about it that you, you're using. And, there, and I don't invest in these companies yet. I might invest in Johnson and Johnson after it splits and so that it separates its pharmaceutical division from the staples. But right now to get into a lot of those companies, there, it, it's being held in a manner that you cannot invest in those products that you are using. And so products that I'm using, I mean, I, I, I brush my teeth and shampoo my hair and, um, and I'll continue to do that. And then there's soaps, right? So I would invest in those companies, but then when you need to also, as you do that, invest in these pharmaceuticals, which I believe is uh, is harmful at many levels. Because once you start using these pharmaceuticals, I know a lot of people who are addicted to pharmaceuticals, right? And not just pharmaceuticals, even Tylenol. I know people, or aspirin, right? I know people who take, take Tylenol or aspirin daily. I believe Donald Trump takes it daily, right? And and I'm not, I'm not fond of that. I don't think that that's necessary. I don't do that myself, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. And so that's why at this point I haven't invested in companies that produce other things that I use on a daily basis, like soap and shampoo and, um, you know, cotton swabs and things of that nature. But Johnson & Johnson is splitting into two, from what I heard. And so then the pharmaceuticals should be separated from the one that's doing baby shampoo and, and other things that are, are necessary for day-to-day -day life. And so I would invest in, in that split. I would invest in, in the... Not yet. I would evaluate it and, and then probably invest in it because things like Johnson & Johnson baby powder, baby shampoo, they've managed that very well. And I think they will continue to be babies and they'll continue to need shampoo and, and baby powder. Okay, going to wrap up the video. Thanks for watching. Someone requested this, so I hope it was useful for that person and also for you. If you are young, don't listen to the headlines that say that there is no opportunity for you to invest. There is always opportunity for you to invest. You might not have a lot of money to invest, and that's just to help you to get stronger. What it does is it forces you to be more selective about your investment, to really scrutinize something before you invest in it, and to choose the right things. Okay, so it's a blessing. So if you're getting started, choose five companies and invest in those five companies. If that's too much work for you, then invest in a, in an, in a, in a fund that, produce, that invests in dividend-yielding companies. There's a couple of them out there. You can do your research on that. I recommend that uh, be, uh, beyond the, the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones and things of that nature right now because of we're living in a unique time where our lives are changing um, because of what happened over the couple, past couple of years, which is basically this pandemic that uh, has hindered the, hindered the change the lifestyle so that people are not going into the office and hindered the travel industry so that people are not spending on hotels and taking flights because there's too many hurdles that you have to go through. So I would not invest in those type of companies. And that's why I don't recommend the index funds right now. Okay, God bless you all. I hope you, somebody learned something from this video. And I hope that you have a great 2022 and that you start investing sooner because that's the ultimate goal if you're in America. Invest because when you invest, you're the owner. You're no longer the employee. You're the owner. You'll feel better. You invest in McDonald's and then you'll feel better when you go to McDonald's and you order whatever you want to eat. You'll feel better because 
you are ordering from a company you own. And if you work for another company, you invest in the company. And honestly, they should be giving you stock. And if they're not, then that company is a little off. And if they're not, then probably there's a reason they're not. And, gen and maybe the reason is that stock is even better than working for the company, right? So you look into it. And if you are working for a company and you believe in the company, mm -hmm. then invest in that company. That's another strategy. And if not, then the ones that I just gave you, those are that's, that's what I'm investing in. That's what I'm putting my money into. I started with, uh, with $50,000 when I started investing and, um, and I, I've made millions of dollars off of it. So I can recommend it. And the ones that I, I gave you are my honest opinion, what I am going to invest in this year. So I hope it's a useful video. Take care. God bless you all. Keep enjoying your lives and keep making this country better.